let's move on, I suppose. God, I hate the future so much. Don't, You're buy, the, don't yeah. buy the goon goggles. I'm not, it's not even fear, it's disgust. <laughs> like, it's genuine disgust. By <laughs> the time travel, just go back to Plato and be like, mm, books, what about audio books, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, Plato put on the goon goggles. <laughs> 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 just yeah. Oh, I just can't take him, and I just I hate the future. The, everything about it has been a profound disappointment. You got to remember when when we were kids. It's like, oh, by the way, we're gonna have flying cars and like things are gonna be great. And it's like, yeah, turns out that actually everyone's gonna be like a weird lip bristed consumer who's got no money and got no future and got nowhere to go. But it's actually gonna be an actual bug, like with a masturbation machine and some soma intake. Living on Plato's Goon Cave. Yeah, yeah, living in Plato's Goon Cave. It's like, well, why would you want this? Like, one of the things that was promised about the future was authenticity, right? Things would be authentically awesome. You will have a flying car. You will fly to Mars on your flying car and you will land on Mars and this will be amazing. And then you'll have sex with a green alien. You were lied to, yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about, you man? Won't, you won't have any of those things. What you'll have is the virtual experience of doing those things. And then you'll turn it off see that you're in a five by five square box and then put on the, the, the mountain thing where you take a dump. And when so, it gets too much, you just ask the government to kill you. Yeah, then you'll just be like, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, just euthanize me now. You know the problem with flying cars, right? Because you know they're real. Oh, I'm sure there are loads of problems with flying cars. No, no, the technology is perfect. We've oh, been sure. able to do it for decades. Yeah, but I'm sure there, there are enough crashes when it's bloody two dimensions. That's the problem. Yeah, I it's know. It's the humans. Of course it's the humans. <laughs> Always the humans. But the, but the point is, at least it would be an authentic flying car crash. <laughs> all right? And the children who are killed by the debris. Yeah. But reality would actually yeah. exist. Whereas in the future we're going into, reality doesn't exist. And actually, when you look around, around at reality, you'll be like, wow, this is awful. I've got to get back in the goon cave. <laughs> like, literally, the, the reality will be so terrible, it will justify the goon cave. Well, let's get back out of the goon cave and into the, the wilderness. Sorry, I'm just really... I, I hate it so much. I've got to write an article called Plato's Goon Cave now. So I don't like being right all the time, but it happens so often I get used to it. Um, a while ago, in fact, two years ago, uh, well, a year and a half ago, uh, we did this premium hangout on lowseas.com, which you can go sign up for five pound a month and watch. Well, I was like, look, there is enough evidence, there is sufficient evidence to suggest that there are, in fact, wild big cats living in the UK. And Callum was skeptical. I asked you to prove it. I don't think that's too harsh. Well. <laughs> There are levels of proof, right? So there is uh, inductive proof and there, there is... I saw it in a dream. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, look, that's one level of proof. <laughs> that I was, that's a standard of proof I was not applying for this hangout. Right? We're not, yeah. There, there were small pieces of evidence that when taken in some, inductively suggested that there were live bring, big cats wild in Britain wandering around uh, pretty much all over the place, actually, um, from various sightings, from various animal attacks, and uh, paw prints and things like this, right? But no, Callum, that wasn't good enough for you. Right? That wasn't good enough. I seem to recall quite agreeing with you by the end. No, I don't, well, uh, maybe, but I'm going to assume that you didn't because it was two years ago. Oh, it's funny that way. All right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but now we have the actual solid proof that they are. And so we're going to present it. Um, so, so, were you just angry that I, you thought I didn't agree with you and that's what this is? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Let's yeah. go. So, uh, this <clears throat> from last year is. Uh, Tristan Cork, senior reporter for Gloucestershire Live. And he, th this has been, and, and it's not just Callum, obviously. There's a, for some reason, in Britain. There's a series of deniers out there. No, no, most people, deniers of this. And I don't know why. Like, what, like, this is really well covered on small news outlets in the Southwest. Like, Bristol, Gloucestershire, like, you know, Somerset, all that sort of thing. There's always an article like, oh, big cat spotted or, you know, sheep ravaged. Or, and everyone's like, no, there are no big cats. And there's all, always in the comments like, well, why would you deny that? Like, what's the point of denying it? It's just this normalcy bias where it's like, no, 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 that's not real. And so it comes to like this guy being like, no, 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 they do live here. And I don't care if you don't believe it because he says, well, look, I know they exist. I've seen one. I've spoken to lots of other people who have seen them. I've spoken to lots of farmers who have had their animals killed by them and come face to face with them. So these are definitely real. And still you get this large contingent of people saying, no, that's not real. It's like, no, it is real. You just haven't seen one yet, right? Um, he gives an example of a chicken farmer who went to his chicken coops in the morning and found that a panther had broken into them and was trapped under the chicken coops because it like clawed its way through the wooden uh, barricade outside but couldn't get actually into the coops to kill the chickens. 
And so he goes in and he's just looking at this panther and the panther's looking at him and it's like, oh God, this must be awkward. Uh, he got out of the way so he could get out as quickly as possible. Um, but the guy was obviously, he's obviously terrified because just to be clear, these things are massive and very dangerous. You know, when you're watching a wildlife documentary, you see the leopard kill a gazelle and then drag it up into a tree. That's what the, he's seeing. Like an animal that powerful, just wandering around. What? No, I don't want to interrupt. I'm listening. So that, that's what they're seeing. <clears throat> um, there was another one, a church warden just walking his dog on a Sunday morning and his dog starts going at a bush and he's like, okay, let's the dog leave. And a panther comes out and just starts trotting off. The dog obviously runs off. It's like, Jesus Christ. You know, this is a bit serious, isn't it? Uh, there was another one, a farmer in North Wiltshire. Again, don't think this is a million miles away from us or anything. Uh, one of his cows had given birth overnight, but the cow was nowhere to be found. They followed a trail of blood across the field and found the calf uh, in a branch halfway up a tree. To be fair, if it's not that far from Swindon, it's more likely that it's like an Eritrean in an animal costume raiding farms for halal butchers. I, I would like that to be the case, but the thing is, this is a photo. That's not a kitty. That's a big kitty. Look at the jaws on that thing. That is a panther. Wasn't the wasn't that the source for these slightly edited? If I recall the uh, podcast, it is not edited. Wasn't the source for this that basically people had them back in the day when you could buy exotic animals? Yes, and then we're like, get rid of this. Yes, in the nineteenth century, the Victorians went out and explored the world, and a lot of them brought home big cats as like you know fun things to have. Look at this strange foreign exotic thing that I have. Arabs today. And then in the 60s, we, for some reason, and I don't know why we keep doing this, elected a Labour government. And the Labour government like, wow, well, no, we can't have big cats. Uh, they're banned. And so everyone's like, okay, so what do we do with the dozens of big cats that are around? And the Labour government was like, not our problem. Job solved. The thing has been banned, and therefore that's the problem solved forever as far as we're concerned. And so people just like, okay, I guess we'll release it into the wild then. And now we have a breeding population of panthers roaming around the English countryside. Anyway, let's move on to the, uh, again, you, you, you might be like, well, I mean, a picture. Um, no, no, I think that's pretty good, to be honest. But um, this was near Cheltenham. This was taken. Can I pet that dog? January 24, this year. I think the picture was actually taken in December last year, but it's a very recent picture in Cheltenham. That's not far from here. That's like 20 miles. Is this right? why you're particularly touched? Yeah, this is why I'm particularly touched. near your house. Yeah. Actually, if this yeah. was happening up in Scotland, I'd be like, well, okay, that's bad. It's they not really my it. problem. That's not that they deserve it. It's <laughs> just not really my problem. If it was in London, it might actually improve things. Yeah, if it was in London, I'd probably be in favor of it. Right? <laughs> but the thing is, no, it's in Cheltenham. And so they found some DNA. Obviously, they found some DNA. Um, so this was from Gloucestershire, where DNA from black hair caught in a barbed wire fence uh, following a sheep attack um, was tested. Uh, and so a forensic laboratory took on the species identification task and used mitochondrial DNA analysis to ascertain a 99% plus match to uh, a black leopard, basically. So there, are, I don't know how the taxonomy of big cats works, but basically um, panthers and things like that are actually leopards that just have uh, melanin, melanated coats. I know the word melanated has been... Right. No, no, I'm laughing because I'm looking at the image and he looks like a medieval drawing of a leopard where yeah. he's fat. <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of funny. But in the winter, they get a thick coat of hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's funny. But anyway, so yeah, this, this is apparently um, totally confirmed at this point. Scientifically confirmed. Uh, and if it wasn't for all of the dead carcasses, we would just have to infer it. Because I mean, what animals are doing that exactly? And this is something that happens all the time. That one farmer came down and like came into his field and found a sheep with his head chewed off. It's like, right, what did that? The hungry, hungry Eritreans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> this appears to be exactly the case. And the thing is, so this, this lends credence to the fact that, in fact, um, people seeing things and reporting things doesn't make them mad, actually. Usually it means that there's something that's happening. Are you going to install a big cat <laughs> mod to your goon goggles and just see them everywhere? No, 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 no. Callum knows where this is going. I know where this is bloody going. <laughs> <laughs> if, if people repeatedly see something, if people it repeatedly catch blurry photos of things, uh, eventually it'll turn out that it's probably there's something there. Um, because these, these sightings have been happening for decades, and apparently they're increasing. So, I mean, there is 
certainly a breeding population because one, as we talked about in the previous podcast, uh, a cub was found, a dead cub was found. So it's certainly a breeding population. Um, these things are seen all the time. And so, of course, Callum, it's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. I'll do your trade. I'll believe in Bigfoot if you believe, no, if you get Dan to believe in the moon landings. That's fairly easy. I think I could prove the moon landings. To Dan? Yeah. Good luck. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the moon landings. I mean, the whole like, oh, we've, we've forgotten the technology to go back there, guys. It's like, really? Have you seen the difference in stuff? I have seen the difference in stuff. But the, and, and oh, we destroyed a bunch of the things for some reason. Like, why would you do that? You know, the, there's, okay, so when you move, um, what was it Saturn V? The massive ones they were, did for the moon. There's a crawler, and you put the rocket on the crawler, and that's allow you to move it around <clears throat> uh, vertically. That crawler, they've lost the technology, 40K style. They legitimately cannot build another one because the guys who made it are dead. Okay, you're really not selling me on the moon landings are real. No, but who do you think's in the engineering department now who can't make that? Sure, but they're not the only engineering department. I mean, Elon Musk could probably set up an engineering Oh, department. he could build a new moon crawler, but it's a very complicated thing and would take him a while, but he'd get it done. I'm sure he could. I'm just saying NASA can't. Yeah, I'm skeptical. Um, but anyway, the point is, I'm betting that in 2024, Bigfoot body. Can we hold you to that? Yeah, put it on bingo card. 100 pound bet. Okay. All right. Is he gonna is he gonna crawl out of a tunnel in New York City? Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Because I mean, like, 2024 has been pretty crazy so far. Um, God, if I lose this, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> right. What I want is positive energy. <laughs> if you dress up in a Bigfoot costume, that I'm doesn't not count. Be dressing up? No, 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 no. It's just we're gonna so- be subscribers doing it now. Solid proof that Bigfoot exists in 2024. That's my yep. prediction. Because it's a more safe bet than any political prediction at this point. Um, but the point is, uh, going back to something that's not a joke, obviously. Um, the point is, this is a genuine concern. Um, this is a real issue because people have been attacked by these. There was one woman in Scotland who was attacked by what she described as a very large cat in front of her house. Um, she managed to get away. And there was one uh, chap in Gloucester who was riding on his bike with his 10 year old son through the woods. And he saw a huge black blur chase after his son. That only diverted when he came around the corner and saw him and therefore got scared off and ran off. But that could have been a dead kit, right? So, like, I think actually, if you're living in England, you actually have to be aware that the woods, uh, the countryside is not as safe as you may have thought. Um, and people just have to stop saying this isn't real because, no, it is absolutely real. We've got the evidence. What more would you need? Um, I haven't really got that much to say on this one, too. It's, it's, I'm right and everyone's wrong. And it's nice to be able to say it. I think we need the gun rules back, I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm totally in favor. Like if there are, the whole reason we got rid of the guns, let's be honest, is because there's no threats. Yeah, I mean, the UK was just such a place in the, that, what is it, the 80s or something? They got rid of all the guns finally? There was one school shooting in Scotland, wasn't there? That uh, was the, the motivation. Pretext, yeah. The reason you can do that is because you know there's no threats in the wilderness, therefore there's no like solid gun lobby to actually stop it. Yeah. But if all of a sudden everyone is like, hmm, yeah, but if I go outside, the hungry, hungry era trains might come, then I kind of, kind of need my battle rifle back. And uh, this, like, I mean, what, one thing that the government could do, which would be good, is literally just offer a ransom, like, offer a reward for every big cat shot, because farmers still have shotguns. Mm. So for every, could shoot foxes and stuff. So for every cat shot, um, they're alive. Five grand. Well, probably not five grand. I mean, well, how maybe, many are there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they they think there might be up to two hundred and fifty of these. So, um, and of course, what uh, people like, what are they eating? Well, deer and livestock at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I mean, one thing that the government could do is put a bounty on them, frankly, which would be awesome. Get rid of them. Don't like it. I want my countryside to be safe when I'm walking out with my kids. Don't I have to take a gun with me, actually? If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on Henry the Third. Part two. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.